and welcome to NDTV Profit. Today's focus remains on office space solutions after the company came out with its Q4 results after its listing in May. To discuss more, we have the managing director and the chairman, Mr. Amit Ramani, with us. Hello and welcome to the show, Mr. Ramani. Thank you for having me over. It's my pleasure. So a good listing for you a month back. You've come out with your Q4 results, strong numbers, 45% of revenue growth. You've also reported a net profit of about 1.4 crore this time as compared to a loss in the corresponding quarter of last year. Talk to us about this. How do, you, how do we see the profitability growth going forward? Do we expect the company to report a profit figure for FY25? So actually, clearly, if you you know look at our uh, you know growth journey, as you mentioned, you know almost fifty percent plus growth in our uh, revenue, uh, our EBITDA uh, has been consistent. You know, thirty per plus percent is what we have been able to achieve over the last couple of years. Uh, consistently, you know, we have uh, you know projected for the market almost about a thirty percent growth on our revenue number uh, for FY twenty five. Uh, we're looking at about a one and a half percent growth in our EBITDA number, and uh, you know clearly, without commenting on specific numbers on profitability, uh, we have worked hard to make sure that our profitability, which went from a negative almost 47 crores for FY23 to about negative 17 odd crores for FY24, with as you mentioned, one and a half odd crores of uh, profit in the Q4 of FY24. So I think that directionally, we are obviously headed in the right direction. I won't comment on specifics, but uh, our EBITDA margin is going to improve by uh, one and a half percent. Our growth is about 30 odd percent. Uh, we are also looking to add about 40,000 additional seats in FY25. So I think uh, we are clearly on that path, but uh, specifics, I will leave it for the future. Mr. Raman, you mentioned about 1.5 percent of EBITDA improvement. That's what you're looking at. Can you? expand more on this, where we are looking at um, value unlocking over here in terms of operational efficiency, also the 30% growth, where is this coming in from? Sure. So uh, clearly, if you look at our size and scale, uh, today we are across 180 plus centers, uh, which translates about roughly about 100,000 odd seats across, uh, you know, today 16 cities, 62 plus micro markets. So I think that is a scale that we have built. And I think Today, as you see, uh, the scale is going to start giving us both operating leverage and operating efficiency, right? I mean, it took us uh, a while to build that large network, one of the largest uh, in the country by far in the co-working space. And to that end, I think, um, you know, that journey took us a bit. Now, I think as we have achieved that scale, and this year we will probably add three more cities, um, you know, in addition to the ones that we are already operational in. But I think the base of the addition is uh, much larger. So the operating efficiency and leverage is happening, and that's the reason that we'll have about a 1.5% positive uptick in our EBITDA margin. Um, the growth that I mentioned, um, you know, is a direct correlation to the number of centers and the seats uh, that we have. Uh, so if you look at our business today, we are currently, uh, we ended FY24 about 95,000 seats operational for us, right? And today, if I look at our projection for 40,000 seats, out of that, roughly 32,000 seats we have full clarity on, right? 15,500 seats across 21 centers are where the current fit outs are going on. And then there's another 16,500 seats where we have uh, the LOI sign, letter of intent sign with our uh, landlords, and another 10 odd thousand seats where we are in advanced stages of uh, negotiation with our landlord. So we have full clarity on 32,000 seats and uh, you know uh, projected clarity on another 10 odd thousand. So the 40,000 seat clarity is there. If you looked at our exit for FI24, we are at about blended of 71% occupancy with about 12 months on older centers at about 85% occupancy, right? So clearly, as we expand our uh, network, as we expand our demand ecosystem where we are servicing our customers, that's where, you know, 30% of the growth is going to come from. Of the total growth of 40,000 seats, about 85% is going to be in tier one cities, 
and about 15% is going to come from tier two cities. So that's kind of where we, you know, look at our growth. Also, if you were to look at our design and build business, um, if I was to look at the FI24 split between our co-working business and our design and build business called Office Transform, the split is roughly about 75-25. That split will continue and the growth across both those businesses will translate into 30% growth for overall for the business. Yes, Mr. Ramani, absolutely. That's some strong growth trajectory and a nice breakup of all the businesses going forward. But again, I want to focus more on your asset light business model now, the managed aggregation model. So currently 66% of a mix coming in from you. This versus the straight lease model, I want to understand the kind of capex requirements, the payback period, as well as the margins. How do they differ between these two? Yeah. So um, I will start with a straight lease model. In a straight lease model, about 40% of the revenue goes towards the rent, which is fixed in nature uh, during a five or six year uh, lease period. Then about 20% odd is what we will call is the operating expense. And about five odd percent is common area maintenance for the building. So if you were to look at a straight lease model, typically you would essentially make your first penny when you reach about anywhere between 60 to 65 percent occupancy 40 percent of rent which is fixed and 20 to 25 percent of uh, operating expense and common area maintenance some of it has variability and that's why i say at 60 to 65 percent you are going to make the first uh, rupee now average you would reach about 90 95 percent occupancy in in this uh, scenario so you would end up making about 30 per percent plus uh, kind of a margin uh, at a center level now when you come to our managed aggregation model assuming that we are in partnership with the landlord and we have a profit share at as the core model then the operating expense and the common area maintenance remains the same so 25 percent now what becomes variable is the 40% fixed rent, which is not fixed because what we are offering um, the landlord is a minimum guarantee, which is typically 50% of the market rental. And in majority of our centers, almost 46% of our centers, we do not even have a minimum guarantee. So you start making your first rupee once you cover 25% uh, occupancy, right? Which is basically operating expense and common area maintenance. Beyond that, if you do have a minimum guarantee, then you will end up basically that's as I said, it's 50% of the market uh, rental. So it adds about 20% additional. So in that situation at 45%, you will start making um, your first rupee. And clearly then we are in a structure where typically it's 65% slash 70% to the landlord or 35% or 30% to essentially office. So in that model, what ends up happening is there's at let's say a 70-30 split in profit sharing. The landlord would make about 50-52% um, of uh, the overall uh, revenue and we will keep the rest. So the in this model, our margin will go down to about let's say 22 to 23%, right? Instead of a 30-32% in case of a straight lease. Now the difference is that the risk in a straight okay. lease is 100% carried by us. 100% of the capital investment is done by us. 100% of any upside or downside is carried by us. In the second model, the managed uh, aggregation model, the landlord is my partner. So he shares in the upside, hence the 40% could become as high as 50%, but he also shares in the uh, downside if there was uh, to be an unfortunate uh, you know, challenge there. Now, the very fundamental difference between the two, the return on capital employed, in case of a straight lease would be somewhere around 30 to 35 percent in case of a managed aggregation it could be anywhere between 70 to 150 percent for us so i think that's the dynamic and obviously it's managed aggregation is capital light because my landlord is investing the majority of the capital yes, and yes. also it's risk mitigated because they are carrying the upside as well as the downside risk yes that was quite descriptive on how the model differs and how the margins and um, the capex and everything differs over here but now i want to move on to the kind of capacity addition that you're making 40000 that's the plan so again if i want to look forward to fi25 what is the kind of capex that we are aiming for is it on the similar lines of fi24 or, or or are we looking at a higher number 
So last year we invested about 140 odd crores, right, towards our capital investment. And uh, today we last year added about 28,000 odd seats. Now clearly as we go forward, I think the mix of uh, what our capital um, light model, which is managed aggregation and straight lease will remain similar in the percentages that uh, we have uh, demonstrated for FY24. Um, we believe that the capital investment would be in the similar range, might be a bit higher because the number of seats that we're adding is a bit higher, but it would be in a similar range as what we had for FY24. All right, so the CAPEX remains at a similar level for FY25 as well. Well, that was the last question. Thank you so much, Mr. Ramani, for joining in. We look forward to more interactions going forward. Thank you once again for joining in to NDTV Profit.